for that wonderful consciousness. Oh, it is indeed a joy to welcome our beloved Reverend John Scott to the podium to deliver his encouragement. Now you know that I hope you have your pen and your paper. It's homework time. Help me welcome Reverend John to the podium. Thank you, Reverend Anne, for that lovely uh, welcome back. Uh, you said earlier in your opening treatment that it was uh, my first morning out. That's the first morning out on, from my vacation. And it is a joy to welcome all of you, wherever you are, whether it be in the sanctuary or on the World Wide Web, to the beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living here in warm, balmy, and beautiful Jamaica. You know, during my very restful August vacation, I often found myself humming or singing out loud that first hymn, Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. And a friend sent me a, a, an amusing WhatsApp that made me sing it again. Evidently, an ad appeared in the newspaper um, which said, 2019 Mercedes-Benz for sale at $1. Well, I suppose some people thought they'd left off all the noughts, you know. Uh, but nobody took it seriously, so nobody um, applied. Except for an older gentleman who, ha having not much to do, um, said, let me go look at this car. So he went and Indeed, the lady was selling the Mercedes-Benz with just 12,000 kilometers on the, on the clock for a dollar. So she sold him the car, handed him the papers and the key, and as he was leaving, he said, no, I'm, I, I have to ask you, why on earth are you selling such a wonderful car so cheaply? She said, oh, I'm just following my late husband's instructions. His last will and testament um, stipulated that the proceeds from the sale of the car should be given to his secretary. <laughs> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, <laughs> forgive our foolish ways. But more seriously, I was pondering, you know, why we human beings sometimes seem so hell-bent on self-destruction. I am by training a behavioral scientist, and yet I've found that the behavior of people in recent times has had me thinking maybe I need to go back to university and, and revisit all that I have learned about human behavior. Why, my friends, given the multiple reports and warnings of the increasing numbers of COVID, COVID cases, here in Jamaica and across the world, would you want to go to a party and eat, drink, and dance up close with hundreds of other people, all or any of whom may have the virus? Now, I, I kind of understand the motivation of the promoters. It, that's, you know, it's a money-making thing. But somebody just told me of, a, of a, a party in West Kingston in which... Everybody was required to wear white, and it was a free party. There were 500 guests. Evidently, the host does this annually. He has a party to, commemor to commemorate his mother's passing. I can only assume that he wanted as many people as possible to follow her into the hereafter. But, you know, 500 people, it's a free party, so the money wasn't the motivation. Um, but it also, love couldn't be the motivation either. Why would you have 500 people risking their lives? Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. And you know, your first inclination may be to say, damn them to hell. It's their choice, so they deserve what they get. But my friends, many thousands of innocent people who didn't make that choice will also suffer and die. So there has to be another approach. And I thought about this deeply and prayed about it over my holiday. And I believe that 
the time has come when we need to take a spiritual approach. To the foolishness, to the disbelief, to the naysayers, to those who have forgotten the truth of their divinity. A spiritual approach to ignorance and superstition and darkness. And so my thought was, let us begin to bless to cease criticizing and condemning and blessing all those who have apparently lost their way. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because I remember once my, my late blessed mother, Daisy, um, was blasting a worker who had made a very expensive mistake. And I had just started coming to this, uh, uh, to this temple and learning, you know, a positive approach uh, to life. And so I said, Daisy Love, why don't you try blessing the worker instead of uh, chawing fire, as we say in Jamaica? And she said, yes, son, that's what I'm doing. I'm blessing the hell out of him. <laughs> but you know, my friends, the approach I'm, I, I'm talking about, this power of blessing, and the power of blessing is the title of my encouragement this morning. I want us to really contemplate the good that we can do. Blessing was, of course, of course not new. The Judeo-Christian Bible has many stories of the Hebrew patriarchs voicing blessings and predicting the good that will come to those blessed. And the Hebrews believed in the power of blessing very strongly. So they didn't want anything or anyone to interfere or to block a blessing that was coming their way because they regarded, as a, regarded blessing as a priceless gift. And we're told in Genesis 32, 26, that Jacob wrestled with an angel and said, I quote, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. I'm going to hold on to you until you give me that blessing that transforms lives and transforms consciousness and transforms the outward circumstances of people's lives and that calls forth from them the good that is ours by divine right of being. And so the power of the spoken word or, or silent word did not pass with Jacob or the patriarchs of the Bible. Each of us now can utilize this amazing power. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our great teaching, writes in the Science of Mind textbook, and I quote, when we constructively praise and creatively bless, Life abounds with love, peace, and joy, unquote. Well then, what is blessing? Blessing simply is the act of beholding the good in all creation. Blessing helps us to keep firmly in mind the truth that there is a spiritual relationship between all the parts of creation. And everything is linked, as we know, we are all connected. Someone once said that, that a butterfly, you know, flaps its wings in the Amazon jungle and a star somewhere out in the universe trembles. So all of life is interlinked and blessing acknowledges this, this web to which we all belong, this matrix, this divine matrix that links all life, all sentient beings and all of creation and makes us one. So once we start to follow the practice of blessing, of beholding the good in all, we will find that it grows into a habit. We can develop the habit by using constructive thoughts, speaking constructive words, and cultivating positive feelings. I'm smiling, as I said, because, you know, this blessing the hell out of people was made into a fine art by the Babemba tribe of South Africa who learned to look beyond appearances and use blessing as a powerful transformational tool in their daily lives. In the Babemba tribe, when a person acts irresponsibly or unjustly or dishonestly, he or she is placed in the center of the village alone and unfettered. 
all work ceases, and every man, woman, and child gathers in a large circle around the accused individual. Then each person in the tribe speaks to the accused, one at a time, about all the good things the person in the center of the circle has done in their lifetime. Every incident, every experience that can be recalled with any de detail and accuracy is recounted. All of his or her positive attitudes, good deeds, strengths, and kindnesses are recited carefully and at length. As you can imagine, the tribal ceremony often lasts for several days. At the end, the tribal circle is broken. A joyous celebration takes place, and the person is symbolically and literally welcomed back into the tribe. In our outreach at the prison here in Kingston, which has sadly been suspended due to the pandemic, I have adapted the Babemba approach by having each participant in our learning circle share with every other member of the group something they admire about them. Now, this has very interesting results because, of course, at first, there is great resistance to this exercise. You see, in Jamaica, men don't normally compliment other men. It's not done. It is frowned upon. But as, as we start and the, the compliments begin to, to go around the circle, you can see people straightening up. Body language changes. Shoulders you know, drop and chins are, are pushed forward. And it, it's just very simple, you know. Boy, my youth, me really have to big you up, you know, because you all, all, all's way willing for help. Anybody in the, on the cell block. I notice it about you, you know, I'm a big you up for it. So it changes the energy in the group in really profound ways. Some of those people in that circle have never been told anything that they have done is good. They are only, they've only been told them not what nothing, them now come to nothing. Maybe from as little as, you know, being small children when they got up to boyish or girlish mischief. You know, their caregivers would say, you know, I come to nothing, you're just like your papa, you're worthless. And so the blessing, the exchange of admiration for the good, recognizing the good in those people, calls it forth in ways that are just amazing. I remember at the end of one session, one of the, of the participants said, you know, you know, when we're done that class, I may feel like we've been to church, you know, but you're not preaching a sermon. And, you know, we don't have to preach a sermon. All we need to do is to bless and to behold the good in our people, in all people, in the world, even in people that may appear to be unlovely, unloved, and not our, you know, to our liking, whose behavior is not to our liking. Can we look past that and like the Babemba of South Africa, look for and recount and focus on the good that is inherent in all people? So how do we apply the principle in a practical way in our, in our life every day? Knowing how important order and system are in the accomplishment of anything, we could set up the practice of blessing on a scheduled basis. In other words, we could set ourselves a blessing challenge. And so guess what? That is your assignment. You have a blessing challenge this week. And you might want to take it beyond this week. Most of our daily routines begin in the morning, so this is, is an excellent time to do your blessing challenge. Just give yourself a few moments of quiet time and then affirm, today God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. Let's say that. Today God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. I'm not convinced. Let me hear it again with, with passion. Today, God is blessing everything and everyone by means of who? Me, me, myself, and I. That morning blessing will become a mantra for you, my friends, and will influence your approach to the entire day's events. Of course, you know, you can expand this morning blessing period if you choose to, to do 
to do so. You can give a special blessing to each member of your family, friends, neighbors, and co-workers, calling them by name during your blessing period. So you could make a list of people that you want to bless. You can even bless our political leaders, world leaders, and the nations of the earth. So to add system and order to your blessing program, make that list and just put down all the people that you would like to say a blessing for in your morning routine. And you can also raise the bar of your blessing challenge by setting aside brief times throughout the day to stop and do your special work of blessing. After a while, you know, you will discover that the practice of blessing has become automatic. You will find that before you do anything, you will do a prayer of blessing. And this will include even those things which you might find ordinary or, or irksome. I actually use this, this principle to transform my dislike of going to the supermarket. As I park, I speak a word of blessing. Perhaps, thank you God that I am able to go shopping. I bless every item on the shelves as material proof of your infinite bounty. There was no bread on Friday, though. As people, you see, dear Lord and Father of mankind, why would you, as a family of four, fill a supermarket trolley with eight loaves of bread when you know that there are people who would just love one? Just one to take them through the three days of no movement that we have, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday except you have a young teenage boy and they could eat half a loaf at a sitting. But, but eight loaves of bread. I saw it, actually saw it and counted it in somebody's trolley. I said, what, you have a restaurant? No, but me don't know when me I get to come out again. So this whole experience, if you just, if I would just say, you know, that before I get out of the car, this whole experience of supermarket shopping is blessing me right now. And so it is. Not only do I feel joyous as I shop, and very often I sing. <laughs> In fact, once I, once I got to the cashier and she said, a anything wrong, sir? So I said, no, no, are you okay? You got, your, you got your joke, which is what we call the jab. And she said, yes, but you're not singing today. So I feel so joyous sometimes that I'm going up and down the aisles and, and I'm singing. Um, but not only does it make the experience more joyful, believe it or not, somehow my money seems to go further. And I, I really, you ever go to the supermarket and it's just two things you want and you come out with a trolley full? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Par for the course. So try blessing when you're doing the chores that you really don't like to do. Somebody on Facebook asked, what is your least favorite chore? And people put the laundry or, you know, mopping the house or whatever. Try blessing it before you do it and see if that doesn't shift the energy. Um, and if members of the household do something for you, give them a blessing. You know, say, boy, I really appreciate you, you know. I said to our musical director this morning, Angela Elliott, I want a photocopy of you. You know, just would like an extra copy. She's so wonderful is she with the music. So, bless, my friends. Bless, bless, bless. If you're going out to work, when you're entering the office, give it a blessing. If you are working from home um, or schooling at home, before you log on to the computer, give it a blessing. Everything responds to blessing, even so-called inanimate objects. Uh, you, know, you know your soul, the vehicle you drive, maybe the Mercedes you bought for a dollar, has a soul, it has, it has a, an essence, it has absorbed your, your, your energy and it actually responds. Give it a blessing. I learned from Dr. Elmer, she always said, I always bless the car and tell it not to leave me on the road. It can leave me either at home or at work. And I do it consistently. And you know, my car has never broken down on the road. It leaves me at home or at the temple. So bless, bless, bless everything and everyone you come into contact with. Friends, the power of blessing therefore has no limits. It can and must be applied to every phase of your life. I just saw somebody saying this to somebody in the audience. I tell you. <laughs> so, yes, bless. If we all use the same amount of energy, 
for blessing that we do in condemning and criticizing and judging, we would all get much better results in life. So wherever condition, a condition appears in your life, remember that it comes to you to be met, handled, and blessed, and nothing is too unimportant to bless. The spiritual attention that we give to that which we may appear unimportant is like water to the desert. It causes growth, unfoldment, and fruition. Early New Thought author Tom Johnson, in his book, Lessons from the Source, puts it this way, and I quote, when you praise, what you praise comes into your life for your good. What you criticize stays in your life at the level of criticism. What you praise comes into your life for your good. What you criticize stays in your life at the level of criticism. When we complain about anything, we are saying to the law of mind that this is the way we want things to be. Blessing, on the other hand, stimulates the law at the level of prosperity, love, health, and success, and we experience it all richly and greatly. Of course, the wonderful um, example of blessing set by Jesus, the way Shaw and Master Teacher, which Reverend Dan shared um, as the epigraph to our inspirational reading this morning, um, by Jesus, the way Shaw, when he blessed the loaves and fishes. This, this just this few, few pieces of food. And he lifted up his eyes, the Bible says, to heaven. And heaven, of course, means in consciousness, and blessed it. And of course, you know the story, it fed the multitude. Now, many, many Bible scholars have pondered on this miracle. And there was one, one theory that a caravan was passing at the time, coincidentally. And the, the, the owner of the caravan, the rich, the rich caravan owner, um, it, you know, the, had a, a, all the food supplies necessary. And he was moved by, by at seeing the multitude. And so he was moved to, to share the provisions that were, that were in the caravan. If that is so, so be it. It is still a miracle, and it's still a blessing. Other uh, Bible scholars say that what really happened was that the multitude was so, so shamefaced, I suppose, but, and also inspired by the generosity of the little boy who was willing to share his few scraps of lunch that they too took out from under their robes the, 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 the bread and the, the stuff that they had brought from home. And, you know, in Jamaica, it would have been saltfish fritters, you know, or what we call Johnny cake, journey cake, that you could, you would take if you were going out on a long journey. And so everybody shared from, from what they had, and that's how the multitude was fed. If that is so, it's also a miracle. Because the miracle in blessing is that when you bless, you call forth from the universe in the most convenient way and the most effortless way that the universe knows how, and trust me, the universe does know how, the good that is inherent in all people, in all things, and in all situations. I'm reminded of a story I once heard about a man who was bemoaning the fact that he was so very poor in worldly goods. And then he passed a blind man walking with his white cane, happily singing a song to himself. And suddenly he began to take stock. What would I give for my eyesight? A million, two million, three million US? And he decided it's priceless. What about my speech and all my other senses? Again, he came to the conclusion that all of them were gifts and all were priceless. They couldn't be, a price couldn't be put on them. And so he began, instead of complaining, to praise and bless what he did have. And when you praise and bless what you have, it increases and multiplies and brings you more of the same. So soon his fortunes began to take a turn for the better. Now, someone, a friend of mine said, that's fine, but you know, you can't, I, can't, I can't bring myself to bless taxation. That is the one thing. I can bless everything else, but I can't bless taxation. But actually, to bless one's tax returns and payments is an excellent practice. You may not be able to have a direct voice in government, 
and its decisions, but if you dedicate your taxes to good government, you are actually utilizing the spiritual energy. You're, you're, you're giving spiritual voice that will influence the trends of government. Friends, we are connected, and when you think good, when you speak good, when you expect good, you get good. That is the power of blessing. So this week, let us practice the art. Make a, con a concerted effort to look beyond appearances to the spiritual truth that everything and everyone is connected. And in each of us, that good resides and waiting to be called forth. In such a state of consciousness, you can realize that God's presence and power are completely and perfectly in charge of every person, place, and condition. Enter into the blessing challenge with all your heart, and you will discover that, you are, that as you cooperate with God's laws, new and expansive ways of living will open up for you. So let us have a quick practice right now. Please say with me, I bless myself and honor the presence of God in me. Together, I bless myself and honor the presence of God in me. To someone near you say, I bless and honor the presence of God in you. I bless and honor the presence of God in you. Friends, today and every day, I bless and honor the presence of God in you. Your participation this morning has been a blessing. I bless and honor all that you bring to life. Namaste. Clap him again. Rev, that's a good one. That's a great one. So the prescription this week, three times daily, is to bless. So if 80 strong of our community do that three times a day, taking up this power of blessing challenge, can you just imagine what happens in consciousness? And then it spills over into Jamaica. And then it spills, everybody in Jamaica start to bless everybody else. Wow. The whole world is transformed by morning. So please, three times a day, remember, God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. Or I bless myself and honor the presence of God in me. Thank you so much, Reverend John.